Looking after a child with a lifelong condition can be challenging. Now the women gathered here today believe that the first step to victory is accepting the condition. They also believe that their children are a blessing from God. We may look at these children as deformed, but I believe that every perfect gift comes from above. I look at my son as a perfect, perfect gift from God. Jude is Milan Nankunda's third child. Nankunda, a mother of four, learned of her son's condition when he was two months old. He had to undergo brain surgery. So it was actually after surgery that they discovered that he also, you know, got cerebral pulse. In my family, and even the way uh, at the time of my growth, I never saw such children. So being the first with me, it was traumatizing. Cerebral palsy, a disorder of movement and posture, results from an injury to the brain of a baby or newborn child. Dr. Robert Sebunya, a pediatric neurologist, advises mothers to attend antenatal care, which helps in detecting some conditions that could affect the baby. When a baby is being born and it becomes tired, then the brain doesn't, in most of the cases, they don't get enough oxygenation to the brain. And when they don't get that, they end up having cerebral palsy. The other cause that occurs postnatally could have what we call jaundice or yellowing of eyes. In babies, signs of cerebral palsy include the inability to hold up the head poor reflexes and posture, feeding difficulties and delayed development. Even some will have malnutrition. Ma what do you mean? Undernutrition. The child is being fed and is not gaining weight and the other ones, if they, are, if they have the other history and they present with seizures. Eleven years down the road, Nankunda still remembers the fear she experienced after the diagnosis. Whenever I would be moving with him, everyone looks at you, everyone feels so pitiful. I mean, you want comfort, not oh, Bambi, Bambi, you know, that kind of consolation. For Dorothy Chisalare, meeting with other parents facing a similar situation keeps her going. Her son is almost three years old, but she discovered the condition three days after he was delivered. So finding out that his brain had been damaged and it's a permanent condition was very heartbreaking. It was something I thought I couldn't bear. Uh, but meeting other parents has made the journey better for me. Formerly a public relations officer, Chisarare is now into advocacy. However, when her son was younger, she had to quit her job. Getting into strong advocacy for my child, I needed to not hide him but tell the world about his condition. Nankunda, an IT engineer, also quit her career to become a stay-at-home mother. I think about it and of course age, <laughs> age is, is catching up with me. Um, when you're thinking like, can I get employment, then you remember the challenge you have, then the age you have. So I kind of give, give up. A 2016 study of cerebral palsy at Mulago Hospital and around the country found that 52% of affected children were malnourished. Because of societal perceptions and stigma, some resent or abandon their children. What the child looks like depicts or determines where the mother's mental health state is. These kids you see that are malnourished and in terrible condition, the mother is devastated, tired, angry, bitter, and they've simply given up on caring for the child. Uganda has only four pediatric neurologists, all based in Kampala. This poses challenges for caregivers when children fall ill. You go to, 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 to a hospital, they have no idea about that illness. So even if you take a child who is suffering from either a bacterial infection or malaria, they, they always send you to someone who is, who is a neuro, you know, physician. At the World Cerebral Palsy Day commemoration today, most of the caregivers were women. This calls for more advocacy on male engagement in the care for special needs children. Gillian Nantume, NTV Tonight.